Hey guys, welcome to Take Charge and DIY. Today we're going to be doing part two of the reverse osmosis install. And what that means is we're going to be installing the whole system. So stay tuned and we're going to do that right now. We're starting by turning off the water to our filtration system. Then relieve any pressure that's left in there. Turn off your water heater. Then we're turning off the water to our entire house and relieving the pressure. Okay, we're preparing to sanitize the lines going all the way to the reverse osmosis system since we have well water. These canister filter wrenches are awesome. It makes it really easy to remove these filters. Carefully remove as it will be full of water. These standard size 10 inch canisters can be found at Home Depot or any other home improvement warehouse and they're really cheap, about 10 to $15. The inside of these filters really do get dirty over time, so it's a really good idea to make sure that they're spotless before we put it back in. After all, this is your drinking water. We're just using some Lysol spray to disinfect the sink. Either a regular dish soap such as Dawn or a simple green product will work great for cleaning out the inside of these canisters. Now that the canister is looking pretty good, we're going to go ahead and sanitize it with peroxide. Peroxide is pretty safe. It's safer than bleach because once it's used, it turns back into water pretty quickly. Screw everything back together. Give it a quick turn with the wrench. To sanitize your lines, just simply find a filter housing outside that's after your equipment and remove it. Remove the filter from inside and place it somewhere where it won't get dirty. Take a pint of peroxide and just fill it up. Dump it all in. Make sure the O-ring is in place and screw it back on. Tighten with a canister wrench. Slowly turn your water back on so you don't disrupt any media that you have filtering your well water. Go back inside and turn the spigot on slowly. There will be a lot of air and a lot of pressure, so be careful. Leave the spigot run until you smell the peroxide coming out pretty strong. It'll have a very distinct smell. Then, go ahead and shut it off and leave it for 20 minutes. Come back in and rinse it all out. 
We're letting the water run for about five minutes. Then we're shutting off the house water again. Removing any residual peroxide from the canister. And placing the micron filter back into our housing. Turn the water back on and be sure to flush out all the peroxide. Now we're ready to get started. Needle nose pliers are a great way to disconnect these. Right here we need to fill up the tank all the way, which will take a couple minutes, and then empty it out, and we're going to do this two times to make sure the tank is clean. Now take it outside and have some fun. Now we're working on the drain assembly for our reverse osmosis system. The concentrate side that flushes the reverse osmosis membrane will drain through here. At our local Home Depot, they didn't have anything to fit in there directly, so we're using a bunch of adapters. Go ahead and use whatever you can find locally. We're using six to seven layers of Teflon tape on all these connections with screws. And we'll use purple primer and PVC cement for the hard connections. These are the products we're using. You'll want to use this stuff in a well-ventilated area because it smells terrible. We first applied the purple primer. Now we liberally applied the cement to both sides. All you need to do is hold it for about 10 seconds and it'll set. Now we're removing our drain pipe from the garbage disposal and from the other side of the sink. Go ahead and measure the pipe. After we install the T-junction, it'll need to be the same length. Don't forget drain tubing has a little bit of play in it, so you can leave an extra half an inch or so to make sure that you don't cut it too short. A Japanese pole saw works great for this. We found that on any drain pipe, Vaseline will keep them from leaking every time. Tighten it to the garbage disposal first because there's no play in that fitting. All the rest of the fittings have play. Hand tighten each ring. And come back with some channel locks to snug them up. Instead of mounting ours in the cabinet, we decided to screw them together because it's pretty sturdy this way. Now it's time to open up our new tubing. A 12 inch machete should do just fine for this. A pair of hose cutters makes this job very easy. You need a nice 90 degree cut on those hoses for them to work properly. Right here we've gone into the first carbon filter. We've prepared the drain line. We're connecting the concentrate exit from the reverse osmosis membrane. This goes into the drain. We 
We've placed a valve on here because every week or two, you'll need to open up the membrane for a minute to rinse out any of the residual concentrate from the stuff it took out of the water. Now if you remember from the part one video, from your source you go to the first carbon filter, then you go into the RO membrane. The offset output on the membrane goes to the drain, and then the one in the center is going to go to the second carbon filter and the tank. So the straight through is the carbon filter and the T is the tank. This is where the delicious water goes. Plug it into your second carbon filter. Plug the T junction into the tank. There. Plug in your spigot and or your ice maker. We're using some American made half micron carbon block filters. The first filter and the second filter are exactly the same. The second filter just captures any residual taste in the water coming out of the tank. Snug it up with your wrench. Then we're going to turn on our drain bypass valve for about 5 minutes to flush out the first carbon filter. Admire the work that you've done. Turn the water back on, check for leaks, and now the exciting part. Turn on the spigot. After a few minutes, you should see some water start to trickle out. This is about how fast the membrane is going to create pure water. Before your tank fills up, go ahead and check the air pressure. It should be between 7 and 10 PSI. For us, it needs to be 7 PSI because we have well water. Okay guys, once you get everything done, don't forget to let your tank fill up and flush it out uh, two times. That way the tank and the last carbon filter after the tank is flushed out and there won't be any residual like uh, carbon or anything, you know, any manufacturing stuff uh, in your water. And then you're ready to go. Thank you so much for watching. This was DIY Reverse Osmosis System Part 2 in full install. If you need to see how the parts work or what order to hook them up in, please look at Part 1. Now, I'm thirsty and I need to rehydrate. Mmm. Man, guys, this is some delicious water. Oh, there's nothing like a delicious, crisp tasting glass of water on a hot day like this. You know, if you'd like to see some more of these videos, uh, just hit that subscribe button to our channel called Take Charge and DIY. And we have a lot more videos like this that are going to be coming, showing you how to do things like this at your house that maybe you couldn't tackle before, but now you've seen all the steps and how simple it is to do it yourself. We've got this hooked up to our ice maker so even this ice it tastes delicious. Mm. Man I gotta go dehydrate or <laughs> dehydrate. <laughs> I mean I gotta go rehydrate. <laughs>